All right, so you're new to Genshin. You do some 10 pulls on the weapon banner and you get five star Freedom Sworn, which is Kazuha's signature weapon. So you might notice uh, above Kazuha, I am using the trial Kazuha to have access to this weapon. So I can't like put it on another character, right? And I can't show you kind of the, the difference in what having this weapon and not having this weapon would do, but I can show its effects. Elemental Mastery, which is great for Kazuha, as we discussed in the Kazuha guide, which go check that out. Um, a part of the millennial movement that wanders admit from the wind. Revolutionary Corate. Corate? Coral. I'm not going to read the name. So its effect, it's passive. A part of the millennial movement that wanders amidst the winds. Increased damage by 10%, which should be overall damage. When the character wielding this weapon triggers elemental reactions, they gain a sigil of rebellion. This effect can be triggered once every half second and can be triggered even if said character is not on the field. I'm going to wait for myself, past self, to scroll down a little bit. Da -da 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 -da. When you possess two sigils of rebellion, all of them will be consumed, and all nearby party members will obtain a Millennial Movement Song of the Resistance for 12 seconds. Millennial Movement Song of the Resistance increases normal charged and plunging attack damage by 16% and increases overall attack by 20%. Once this effect is triggered, you will not gain a sigil of rebellion for 20 seconds. Of the many effects of the Millennial Movement buffs or... That's such a weird wording. Of the many effects of the Millennial Movement, buffs of the same type will not stack. So, what this means is that we want Kazuha to cause elemental reactions. When that happens, we are going, when that happens twice, which only takes one second, then we will get a buff for the whole party. That's essentially what this means. Now, now this is going to also be very, very good having an Elemental Mastery main stat for Kazuha. Now, Kazuha's attack is 1,533. We're going to cause some Elemental Reactions. We are going to get that passive onto him, so that way you can see we want to slow down the Plunging Attack. 1,692. If we slow down the Plunging Attack, we should be able to get both hits immediately. Both of the Elemental Reactions, because we need one every half second apart, right? So if we do his hold skill and bring everything in, causing an Elemental Reaction, we can hover in the air for just a little bit, and then do the Plunging Attack to cause the second Elemental Reaction to get the full buff right out of the gate. So, this is going to give an attack buff to the whole party. It is going to increase his own personal damage fairly well. And it has Elemental Mastery as its main stat, which is a very, very good for Kazuha because you want to build Kazuha as Elemental Mastery. So now we are going to look at some different characters that this weapon can be good for. Okay, so we're just going to pretend like my Kazuha. Okay, so we're just going to pretend like this Kazuha right here, which is my Kazuha. Okay, so we're just going to pretend that my Kazuha has a uh, Freedom Sworn on him. Doggy, please insert the information for Freedom Sworn right here. Thank you so very, very much. Okay, so like we said, this is Kazuha's signature weapon, so of course it's going to be super, super good on him. Um, it does get up Elemental Mastery. It is going to give the overall damage bonus, and it is going to increase party-wide uh, the the... And party-wide is going to give that buff. Now, Kazuha can easily get both of those stacks very quickly with one attack with his hold skill. It's not going to be difficult to get it, and you should be able to just swap him in and constantly have it up. Next is going to be Jean. Now, Jean, with her burst, is going to be able to also use Elemental Mastery because you want to swirl some stuff. She does heal based on attack, though. This would just increase Jean's personal damage. And it shouldn't be too difficult to get the both elemental reactions to have the stacks up because her burst pulses Animo. Next is going to be Animo Traveler. Pretend that this is not Geo Traveler. Animo Traveler is going to be able to use it kind of the same way as Gene, right? Uh, where you're going to be able to get the buff off. Elemental Mash is going to be great for the swirl reactions that Animo Traveler is going to have. Ele uh, the burst of Animo Traveler can absorb elements, so you can cause multiple reactions that way so it can be good for them next we're going to have dendro traveler pretend that this is green and not geo dendro traveler can use this very well especially with their burst especially in an aggravate team right where you're going to be increasing their own personal damage because of the elemental mastery and you're going to be able to give a party-wide buff because their burst lasts so long in an aggravate team you'll be able to get those two elemental reactions fairly quickly and then everybody's buffed everybody's doing more damage Next is going to be Kuki Shinobu, specifically for a Hyper Bloom Kuki. I mean, even an Aggravate Kuki. Um, having Elemental Mastery on her is going to be phenomenal 
for getting up the damage of your hyper blooms, your aggravates, things like that. So this is going to be a very, very good weapon for her in that kind of team. If you want a healer kooky, not going to be so much. Definitely going to be for damage kooky. Like my hair dog. Don't leave that in. I swear to God, if you leave that in. Uh, next is going to be Bennett. This is going to be... More specifically, uh, it's going to increase his damage in a like vape or melt team where you want him to get some of the vapes or melts. Uh, mainly, it's going to be because of the extra buffing uh, chances for him, right? Because you're going to be buffing with his burst. You're going to be buffing with no bless. You can use it on him to just increase the amount of buffing he's doing. I do recommend something like Mist Splitter, though, or something like... Um, or something like Skyward Blade, where you're going to get some energy recharge and still have a very high base attack for his buffing. Next is going to be Layla, especially if you're partnering her with, like, Four Piece Tenacity, where Tenacity is buffing, Freedom Sworn can buff, because Layla's shield is going to be shooting those little particles out, so you can get uh, the elemental reactions to get the buff. This can be good for a more buff focused Layla and not as much of a shield focused Layla, right? Because Layla's shield comes off of her HP. So you want her to have a high HP, but if you want her to buff more, Freedom Sworn can work. Next, we are going to have Kirara. Now, Kirara in an aggravate team where you want her to do damage, less of the shield, more less of having a good shield, more of her doing damage, right? Like you enter the cat circle of doom, like you enter the cat box of doom and you just kind of run around. This could, oh geez. This can be very good for her if you want to increase her personal damage in like an aggravate or spread team. Next is going to be Nilu. Now this can work in kind of one or two ways, right? If you wanted Nilu to be your on-field hydro driver in a bountiful core team, you can put this on her, especially if you don't have something like key, then you can put this on her. She would be your on-field hydro driver. She would be the one creating the blooms, meaning that you have to invest elemental mastery into her. The uh, getting the attack buff isn't going to be too helpful in a bountiful core, but the elemental mastery will. Also, if you wanted to throw it on her in like a vape team where she's causing a forward vape, that can also be pretty good because you want the elemental mastery for those vaporize. Last, I am going to specifically talk about Chiori slash Albedo. They're going to be pretty much the same in this instance. While elemental mastery is only going to help increase the strength of the shield and not necessarily the damage, having the buffing from Freedom Sworn can be good. You can cause the reactions if they are not in a mono geo team, if they're in a mono geo team, don't even think about it. If they're not in a mono geo team, then you definitely can think about it. Just food for thought, just wanted to throw something in there. Gotta have some niche builds in these videos, right? So Doggy is going to put the information right here, like uh, my Cosmo has it uh, on him, and that's how we're gonna end the video. That is gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments. Myself or someone else, be sure to answer it, and I'll see you in the next one.